morning, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> and welcome to the show on this Tuesday, the 3rd of May, 2022. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad to have you guys here. Now, uh, I'm going to tell you guys what. We are back to watching Deutsche Bank again. Deutsche Bank is floundering again. Uh, their stock is getting near low right now. Uh, of course, we've been watching them for a long time, and it seems like they bounce back almost every time. But here's the thing. This time, the Fed's going into a tightening schedule that is like nothing that we've seen in recent history. And this is going to have an effect upon Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is carrying in their derivatives books many, many, many trillions of dollars. They could crash the world's entire financial system, simply put. So we're going to start the charts right here. Take a look. This is Deutsche Bank. It's at 9.84 euros today, right now. And uh, we can see it's went into a little bit of a down hill slide right now so we're keeping our eye on it another thing we're keeping our eye on is there's is is Russia now Russia's coming up to something called Victory Day on the 9th of May and it's a big holiday it commemorates the victory over Germany in 1945 you know and, uh, you know, World War II. It celebrates World War II. It's Victory Day on May 9th. Now, there's rumors cir circulating on the Internet right now. And I'm not going to... I don't deal too much with rumors. But we should watch the war around this date and see what happens. Uh, because rumors circulating on the Internet right now. And uh, some of them are surrounding uh, the health of the Russian leader, you know. And so I'm keeping my eye on that. And so that's one of the things I'm watching right now. So so we should watch what's happening in the war effort right around that date of May 9th. So keep your eye on it. And I mean, that's not a long ways away. It's what, less than a week or around a week from now. Uh, let me take a look here. Uh, what else we got to talk about is the Fed. You know, and this tightening schedule that they're on. Uh, Fed is to tackle the United States inflation with fastest rate hikes in, in a decade in decades. Well, they're going to run into a wall, and the Fed's going to run into a wall, a brick wall. So they're, right now they're speeding in the car; they're going 90 miles an hour toward this tightening thing, and there's a brick wall coming up, and it's going to be the effect that it's going to have, and that effect could hit very suddenly. And sharply, when they realize, when when rates really start to get out of control, uh, especially on the long end of the yield curve, you know, and uh, we start to go into a, not a recession, but suddenly into a depression, then they're going to have to do a turnaround. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, the dollar's going to be king right now for this short period of time until they have to, they're forced to turn around. And we're seeing the dollar accelerate upwards into the uh, stratosphere uh, compared to the other fiat currencies. Uh, at the same time, we're losing our biggest uh, bond buyers, purchasers of, of tre U.S. Treasuries, you know. The Fed were purchasing about 40% of U.S. Treasuries. And so if they're not purchasing U.S. Treasuries, look for rates to go up. Uh, it's, this could very well pop the housing industry uh, bubble out there and there's a lot of other bubbles that could suddenly start to pop because the United States is just not going to be able to accept what's happening with the uh, it says here the Federal Reserve is poised this week to accelerate its most drastic steps in three decades they say to attack infl inflation but you know they're way behind the curve on attacking inflation they're not gonna be able to stop inflation they don't have the tools that Paul Volcker had to stop it. And he just barely stopped it in the 70s. And it was weaker inflation than we have now. It says, uh, it says inflation is making it costlier to borrow. For a car, a home, a business, deal, or credit card purchases. All of which will compound America's financial strains and likely weaken the economy. Oh, really? Likely weaken the economy? Yeah, I guess it, that's that's the understatement of the year, guys. 
it's going to be a sudden weakening, and this is what the Fed's going to have to change direction on because this weakening is going to be far greater and far stronger than they ever anticipated in their wildest dreams. So as far as weakening the economy is concerned, they're going to accomplish that more than you could ever possibly imagine. In fact, they're going to put the economy into an absolute tailspin that they're going to have to try to pull it out of. This is our future. Stagflation. Multiples of stagflation. And, you know, the people out there, they're, they're going to get upset. And the first thing that people think, you know, when they get upset, they say, hey, you know, we're going to vote these guys out. That's the first thing they think. When they, when they don't have enough money to, to buy the things that they want or need. Because of the tightening and, and extremely bad borrowing conditions and so on. Uh, you know, I mean, and ultimately, where is all this going in the end? It's going to increase the rate of inflation. It's going to increase the speed of inflation, ultimately. That's all it's going to do. So, yeah, for a very short period of time, they're going to wreck the economy, trying to fight inflation. But inflation's going to win in the end now. Now it's absolutely written in stone. I mean, okay, listen, guys. You know, for years, I, was not, I wasn't really absolutely 100% sure that it was going to be inflation or deflation. And I was giving deflation a chance. I was saying, okay, maybe it, the system's going to deflate to you guys. But I said, I'm pretty sure it's going to be inflation. For years, I said that. Now that marker where I said, well, it's probably 99% inflation and 1% chance for deflation. Now I'm moving that marker away. I'm going to say it's 100% it's going to be inflation in the end. It's going to, in fact, it's going to be hyperinflation because they cannot let the entire economy completely fail, and that's what it would do if they continue with these policies. At some point, they're going to have to step in and try to repair the damage that they did. And that is going to push us into hyperinflation. So they've practically now written hyperinflation into the cards. Where before, it would have been profoundly high inflation. Everybody knew that, more than likely. Now they've written hyperinflation into the cards. So not to worry. They're going to bring out their central bank digital currency, you know. And that way, they can just keep changing the decimal point until the dollar is completely toast, and then they can keep right on going past that. They can make a billion dollars for what? One dollar, you know, just change, move the decimal, decimal point around. So a billion old dollars is one of their new central bank digital currency dollars. You know, and they can just keep doing that to infinity. But what about your poor bank account? That's got the old dollars in it right now. Well, I'm going to tell you, for people, on if they move into a hyperinflationary scenario like that, people that are on fixed income, people that are, you, you're going to have to laterally move upwards in the amount of, of, you're going to have to, in other words, keep up. Your wages are not going to keep up properly. This is going to turn us into a poverty nation. They're going to destroy the middle class. They're going to have people who are on support are going to somewhat keep up because people that are on things like UBI. But, I mean, that doesn't fly. you got to have people work. And we're already seeing the effects of this in the United States of America. I mean, you go to buy a hamburger, and there's a little sign there that says, hey, you know, uh, out, out because you can't get employees. Because you're going to make more on, on UBI, ultimately, when they get the UBI in place. I mean, a system like that doesn't function properly. But that's where we're going. It's called modern monetary theory. Everything, they're wrecking everything. And, you know, here's the thing, guys. Some people think I'm out there, I'm, I'm on the side of the left, or I'm on the side of the right. You know? Politically, I'm talking. I'm not on the, either side. I'm the, on the side of the people. I, I, I don't like either. I like to, I disdain them all equally. All the people in charge right now are wrecking the system, and I disdain them all equally. I don't have, I don't favor any one side or the other side. I think to myself about the people. 
the salt of the earth, the people out there, the middle class people who trying to raise, trying to raise their kids, you know, in a safe environment, and they just want to do their job, and they just want to be paid for doing their job, and they want to have a family, you know, and they want to support their family and 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 have a happy life. Those are the people I'm for. What I'm against is all these people out there, they're like a bunch of savages. This is what they're like. They're like sharks in the ocean, and it's feeding time. And they're out there. And, and, and they're on both sides of the political spectrum is what they're like. And they're just striving and struggling to attain riches and, and uh, obtain power. And, 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 you know, and I mean, where does it all end anyway in the end for them? Let's say they get their power and everything else. They... they they can't take it with them, you know? And I mean, some of the people in the highest places in the world, the highest places, I mean, politically speaking, and the world leaders and stuff, they're so old, they got one foot on a banana peel and one foot in the grave. And, and still, they're, they're striving and struggling, power, power, power hungry. Ugh, you know? And us people out here, what do we want? We just want to raise our families in peace and security. Simple as that. Okay, let's take a look at silver price today. You know, and, and we want to be able to buy something that's out of the financial system that has some stability to it. Without them sons of guns knocking the price the hell out of the price. These four big bullion banks. And, and they're the worst. They're cunning whatevers. Anyway. 2258 for silver today. This should be a free market. It shouldn't be a paper derivatives market. That's not a free market. A free market would determine the actual price of what silver actually should be, and these miners out there could make some profit. They're making they've knocked the profit margin down in the past little bit with knocking the price down. It was up near $26. That was a profit margin for the miners. And what do they do? They've chopped one big hole in the profit margin for the miners. What do you expect is going to happen? Well, they've pretty much, I think, reached the floor. They get near the floor of that profit margin of the miners. They know. They know better than to go through that floor. Because they know if they go through that floor, there won't be any silver for industry. It was a bit of a lag, of course, so there'd be silver for a few months, and then the effects of what they do right now would trickle down over maybe, maybe the next six months. And so they know not to go through that floor. In other words, a small profit margin left for the miners. They know not to go through that. So if they were to go down, like, you know, below 20, they would start to really cut the miners, and they know not to do that. So what do you see? You see the price bouncing a little bit here on silver, and you see it starting to follow a very narrow trading range now. Look at it. Look how narrow that trading range is right now. Okay, let's take a look now at uh, gold. Gold is at 1865, you see? And it's starting to follow that very narrow trading range. They know. These four big bullion banks know exactly how low they can take it without cutting off mining supply. And they're going to keep it down at those prices because they're corrupt. Uh, part of it is they're supporting the dollar and strengthening the dollar right now. They're, they're trying to make the dollar king dollar again. And they're trying to combat this so-called inflation and trying to keep the system stable. But they're being far too aggressive. And what they're going to do is they're going to roll the whole financial system over into a depression. And they're not going to stop until they do that. Because they don't really know what they're doing. They're academics, and they think they know the financial system, but they don't. They don't know what an impact credit has on the financial system. It's all credit-based system. I mean, it should be a no-brainer. For a person like me, who studies this day in, day out, seven days a week, you know, for years and years and years, for a person like me, it should be obvi it's obvious that it's a credit-based system, and you start to remove credit, you know what's going to happen. It's, it's a no-brainer. But for these people out there who have all their credentials uh, from colleges and stuff, you know, and their academics and things, they just can't seem to get their head around that simple fact. 
<laughs> so I know what's going to happen. They don't. They think, hey, they're going to be the heroes. They're going to crush inflation and everything else. If they just look back in history and see what Paul Volcker did in the Paul Volcker era to crush inflation, which he was successful, but what it took, then they'd realize that they're that they're just they're not even going to scratch the surface on this thing. You know, just using the Paul Volcker era, Paul Volcker era as an example. Anyway, we got to move on. We got to get going here because we're taking too long. Uh, 14 minutes already, if you can believe that, into this show. And I generally like to keep my shows under 20 minutes or so. So we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the cryptocurrencies today. And we're seeing the Bitcoin price at 38504 It's holding in there really good. And I know why. Because the people who have Bitcoin know ultimately where it's going. And it's true. Because you see in the first few countries turn to Bitcoin, you're going to see more of that happening. And in the end, you know, it's going to be a landslide, you know, into this these, this monumentous change in what money really is. You know, and fiat currencies, handwriting's on the wall for them. Let's take a look now at the Dow Jones. It looks like it's up today a little bit, you know, uh, 32 points. But uh, the th overall trend is going to continue downwards until the Fed changes direction. They will. They're going to change direction. Count on it. And then it's the sky's the limit. So for you guys out there who are really smart and you can time it to when the Fed's going to change direction on this. And, you know, the... Uh, the evidence will be out there for you. You'll see when the Fed starts to get nervous about the economy and starts to talk about uh, when they become less hawkish than what they are right now. You'll see it start to happen ahead of time. If you know what to watch for, you watch my channel. I'll be all all over it. I'll be on top of it for you guys, so that you know when this is going to change direction. And if you can buy in near the bottom. You're going to do really good, just like the people who bought in during the bottom when this market was at the bottom before the pandemic uh, stimulus started. And you know how much it went up, you know. I mean, if we go back uh, here on, where's the thing? Well, if we were to go back on this, I could show you. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'd have to go back like uh, five years, I suppose. I could probably find it. Right here, this big fall right here. See this this big fall right here? You know, and they bought in here at the bottom, and look, it's up, 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 up for them. And they made out good. Well, that's what we're doing right now. We're into a, a, a fall again. Not quite as precipitous or fast as at the beginning of the pandemic, but it is going to find a bottom, and it's going to go up, 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 up. All over again. It's going to be a bull market, in it, but you got to wait for it. you got to know when to buy. You know, it's like the song The Gambler. Got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and so on. You know, it's like that. Anyway, uh, not sure. I uh, I might have to cut that part out of my show, depending on uh, what. To... I mean, that's... Okay, listen. Uh, let's take a look here at uh, at crude oil today. And uh, we're looking at 104. Toasty warm for crude oil, but still it's down 93 cents on the day so far. So you're paying a lot at the pump right now. Well, that's obvious. Uh, taking a look at the move index, and you can see over the last year it's just up, 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 up. It's at 135. This could be a very strong indicator of when the Fed turns as well. That's why I'm keeping my eye on it. Uh, I'm wondering how, how, how high they can let this thing get. Or what they just might do to try to solve this, you know, what kind of money injections they would need. Right now, they they don't want money injections, but they can't let this go too far. Or we might be talking about insolvency within the system. Well, let's take a look now at uh, bonds rates. And we're seeing bond yields fall for a change, you know. We're seeing the yields fall about 7 basis points on the 10-year at 
and we're seeing uh, yields falling all the way across the long end of the yield curve. So 30 years at 2.98. So the 30 years back under three again. So anyway, once in a while, you know, you'll get a buyer. <laughs> so it looks like somebody's buying bonds a little bit today, but I don't. Th I think that's going to be a very temporary thing. Well, let's take a look now at the U.S. dollar index, 103. And the dollar's fallen off just a little bit today, respective to the bonds. Well, this has been your show for today. Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. And remember to hit that notification icon, you know. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the very next episode. You guys have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.